Welcome once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Our first major conversation for today, the National Union of Railway Workers has declared a three-day warning strike starting from the 18th of November. Uh, after the meeting that was held on the 10th of November, uh, they of course uh, are complaining of uh, working conditions and very poor remuneration. And, you know, maybe also a little bit of, uh, you know, a poor or a little bit of insincerity, insincerity, I beg your pardon, from the minister. We're speaking this morning with the President General, National Union of Railway Workers, Innocent Ajiji. Good morning and thanks for joining us, sir. Good morning. Thanks for having me this morning. All right. So I want us to go back to, to your meeting. You, ha you held a meeting on the 10th of November. Uh, give us uh, you know, some details, exactly what you know, played out in that meeting. Well, uh, the, the, uh, first of all, my name is Comrade Innocent Luca Ajiji, the President General of the Nigerian Union of Premier Workers. We held a meeting on Saturday with the Minister of Transport here in Lagos. And uh, the meeting ended in deadlock because uh, our expectation was not met by the time we met with the Minister of Transport. Because uh, for last year, in fairness to him and the uh, managing director of railways, uh, the enhanced salary structure was included in the budget proposal for 2021. But unfortunately, when it got to the National Assembly, the National, National Assembly struck it off. And so, uh, that brought us back to square one. So, and uh, we started all over again from uh, the time the budget was uh, uh, approved and that of our enhancement salary was not included. We started uh, by making consultations and series of write-ups to all concerned. At the end of it all, our last uh, write-up got to the Minister of Transport precisely five months ago. And uh, with the intention and with the promise to assist us in seeing Mr. President to grant uh, approval so that uh, other protocols will be followed and then uh, we will achieve uh, the, the enhanced salary structure in no distant time. But unfortunately, when we met on Saturday, the minister was telling us that um, uh, Mr. President has traveled and so uh, we should be patient. When the president comes back, he is going to present our matter. So that now brought us to the knowledge that uh, nothing was done at all about our request for the past five months that we have submitted documents to Mr. Minister. So that is why we are still going to embark on the three days one strike. Okay, so um, in a letter to the Managing Director of the Nigerian Railway Corporation and also to the Minister of uh, Transport, you describe the salary structure of the Nigerian railway workers as the most worse. He says the uh, you, the worst and most indecent in your uh, letter of all salary structure available to the parastatal. Why, why, would, why did you describe bid as that? And uh, what is the current salary structure and what are you asking for? Thank you very much. We have to, to be sincere to entire Nigerians and even to the minister himself and the government themselves. They are very much aware that among the old parastatals in the Ministry of Transport, Railway workers are the most poorly, poor, poorly paid workers. And um, we say this because we happen to fall under the uh, uh, consolidated salary of uh, comps uh, uh, salary structure. And uh, we are the people that falls within the category of those that collect 30,000 Naira as minimum wage. And so uh, 30,000 Naira is what is being paid to a railway worker. Now, when you deduct allowances like pension contribution, tax, union dues, you would have a take home of about 26,000 Naira. So, and as I talk to you today, that is what railway workers are collecting. Those that falls within the range of level four to six, that is their take home. And but when you go to other parastatals within the Ministry of Transport, of course, you know what I'm talking about. The salary differences is so huge that uh, 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 it will let you know that railway worker is the most patient worker in the whole country. Mr. Ajiji, when you say levels four to six, um, yeah. earning 26,000 Naira a month, can you clarify for us what's, what's the role of the, you know, the people who are on that level? What, what you know, are their responsibilities? But God bless you. Amongst them, you will see this 
they are there are these uh, local pilots who drives all these locals abuja kaduna wari itakpe lagos ibadan among them there are people who do maintenance services on our locomotive among them there are people who do maintenance services on the track that the trains run through and so imagine someone doing a very very delicate job like this collecting such amount of money will there be the zeal as i talk to you a lot of people that were employed between 2015 2018 2019 have left because they couldn't seek a career in railway due to the poor nature of the salary so imagine someone handling a delicate duty like this in an organization like ours that the federal government is busy modernizing the infrastructure and bringing modern railway to serve nigerians imagine a person working in that organization collecting such amount of money how could he put in his best how could he be motivated to do what he is supposed to do and it will interest you to know that we work 24 hours we run shift we we don't observe weekends we don't observe a public holidays in order to serve Nigerians. So, so, so you're the saying the person, needs to be better than this. the person manning the, the train, you know, yeah. between Wari, Itakpe, and, and the lights, and the, you know, the popular rail tracks across the country, yeah. is earning yes. 26,000 naira a month. Certainly. The person who is maintaining those locomotives, the person who is maintaining yes. the, the rail tracks, is yes. earning 26,000 naira a month. Certainly. So we know that um, the National Union of Railway Workers is also an affiliate of, you know, the the labor uh, that's Nigerian Labor Congress. Nigerian yeah. Labor Congress. What has the Nigerian Labor Congress done, you know, to uh, intervene in this case? Uh, you know, in struggle like this, it has to pass through stages. So we have to do our own as a local union before, when it gets to a particular level, then we can. Take, uh, the Nigerian Labour Congress will take it up from where we, 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 we are. But uh, at least we have to put in our effort first and then get to a particular level. When we get to that level, that Nigerian Labour Congress needs to come in, they will certainly come in. So I'd also like to find out, apart from the fact that you're asking for a salary increase, I would also like to find yes. out how much are you expecting as an increase from 26,000 naira? Uh, what are you expecting? And what are all the concerns, apart from salary? You also mentioned the working condition. What are the other concerns of the railway workers? Thank you very much. Apart from the salary, we have allowances that are supposed to be paid to workers. And as I talk to you now, the standard working condition of railway was reviewed last in 1978, which, of course, by law, it is supposed to be reviewed every five years. So you can imagine how patient the railway staff is. Because if you check the standard condition of service of railway workers, you will still see, you will still see where monies are paid in 10 naira, 15 kobo, 20 naira, 30 kobo. For God's sake, it needs to be reviewed. So if that is reviewed, I think the allowances, and if they are being paid, at least it will make the salary appreciate to a certain level. It, it and sounds besides... All right, go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Gigi. Okay. Besides, of recent, we had of a 200% salary increase for NIMC. That is those who uh, make this uh, national identity uh, yeah. card for Nigerians. So if NIMC, that is not generating anything, can be, uh, their salaries can be reviewed, why not railway? That at least of recent, because of the new modern trends we have, we have been generating to a reasonable point. So, so when, when is the last time that there was any sort of salary review for railway workers? The last time that that took place was about 1983. All we have been surviving on is the general minimum wage that normally comes into place in the whole country. So, did, I mean, did you say 1983? Yeah. So, so what yes. this sounds like is because um the railway you know has not been fully functional in nigeria since the 80s like you have mentioned or maybe early 90s um there hasn't been any conversations on reviewing the salary or reviewing the working conditions of your workers um since then certainly there has been agitation but in fairness to government and in fairness to the union then uh agitations have been made but uh government never met 
the agitations. And at the point in time, uh, government uh, lost interest on railways because certainly we have the workers there and we are willing to do the work. But when you don't provide the materials for us to do the work, what magic do we perform? So in fairness to the administration of uh, President Muhammadu Buhari, we are very satisfied with the infrastructural development that is going on in our cooperation right now. And that makes every Nigerian to believe that since railway is passing through a turnaround like this, in fact, the life of the workers is even better. So, but the case is not like that. So that is why we have to bring out, make our uh, uh, agitations known to Nigerians so that they could come to our aid. So what next after the three days one in strike? What will happen? Because we know that uh, we have seen that strike actions haven't yielded much results over time. So what will be the next action? Yes, after the three days uh, one in strike, we are going to resume back to work and give government some time where we still strategize on the next action to take. So in those three days, what, what does that mean? That trains will not be functional for those three days? Certainly, trains will not be functional for the whole three days. The trains that run between Wari and Itakwe, Abuja, Kaduna, Lagos, Ibadan. We have a train that runs between Kano and Unguru. We have a train that runs between Aba and Potakot. We equally have a train that runs between Lagos to Kano. That is passenger's train. And also, we have a pipe train, train that conveys pipe from Wari to Itakwe also. And we also have trains that conveys pipes from Lagos to Zaria, all those trains will be put to hold until after the three days. That sounds like a lot. Um, share with us also, aside, you know, the poor salary uh, structure, um, are there other things that, you know, the that railway and the railway system, you know, lacks, um, you know, and you've also noticed that you would also like the government to improve on? You know, with, re with, with regards to you know, the whole functioning of the Nigerian railway system? Yes, certainly. There are a lot of things. Let me start from the, the workers' welfare. There are a lot of things. You know, allowances are not being paid. Um, as I talk to you, we have workers that are owing areas of promotion from 2018, 2019, 2020 that are yet to be attended to. We have um, uh, made a lot of complaints over that. And uh, 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 nobody is saying anything at the moment. So we equally have um, uh, 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 situations whereby staff are lacking houses to stay. In fact, government is still employing workers in railway. But accommodation became a very, very serious problem, especially to those who are here in Lagos, Port Harcourt, Kano, and big cities. So. And as I talk to you even, those who run those trains within those axes we are talking about, by the time they drive train from here, for instance, to Ibadan, where to stay becomes a problem. So we have told the government to build um, uh, accommodation, that is uh, rest houses, where drivers and the train crews will stay conveniently and comfortably till the end of their journey. And we have agitated that at the end of your journey, just like in the past, allowances were paid before salaries were even paid, and that was paid separately. You know, so all these are not longer in place over a very long time now. So we are agitating that all those things that workers normally enjoyed in the past should be bring should be brought back to the organization as that will motivate workers to do and put in their best. Then coming to the other side, we are still calling on government not to abandon the narrow gauge. They are modernizing the standard gauge. Yes, we are in support, and we, start, we quite agree. But when you check the narrow gauge, the narrow gauge cuts across 26 states of Nigeria. So if the narrow gauge is being put into efficient use, Nigerians will be happy because that will have the reason to cut down the cost of food because Cost of the uh, cost of food in the market are determined by cost of transportation. So, rail transport system is normally the cheapest means of transportation in a country. So, if government puts in this in place, 
and also take care of the workers' welfare, I think Nigerians will be happy, the workers will be happy, and we would have no reason to go for any warning strike or to agitate for downing of troops. Where, where are your workers currently sleeping? So when, when they arrive at the train, uh, the train station, uh, where do they when sleep? They arrive at the, yes, when they arrive at the train station, at times they hang around with friends. At times they sleep with colleagues who are within the vicinity of the stations. So this, that is not good for the workers. Mm. It's not motivating at all. So, um, as a long term, what do you think that government can do, like, you know, to solve the problem generally? Where should government start from, you know, to solve the problem of uh, the railway workers so that uh, we can get effective performance? In fact, number one, a permanent solution is what we are looking for. That is, they should approve the enhanced salary structure. Let it take effect with immediate effect. That will motivate us to put in our best. Then gradually, government can bring in other things we are agitating for, like building of uh, uh, operational rest houses. That can't be done in a day. And so that we know it's a gradual thing that government will let her do. But what they can do within their reach, it doesn't take long to do the process of enhanced salary structure and begin to pay workers. It doesn't take long. So that government can do within the shortest possible time. And then other things like infrastructural development and the rest of them. And let her come in gradually. That we understand. Okay. So well, that is our expectation for now. Yeah. Is, is there a way that, you know, the National Assembly can also be brought into the conversation? Because you mentioned uh, that, you know, it was placed in the 2021 budget, but sadly got to the National Assembly and it was taken out. Uh, so is there a way that you can also, you know, is there any plan of lobbying, you know, going on with regards to the National Assembly to ensure... Uh, that that doesn't repeat itself? Certainly a lot of lobbying has to be done in National Assembly because no enhanced salary can be paid to any worker without passing through the legislative process. So even if the president grants approval today, it has to pass through the process at National Assembly. Salaries and Wages Commission, budget and planning, all these are people that are involved in doing this process. So, of course, a lot of lobbying will have to go on with the National Assembly and all these places I mentioned, so that we can achieve this within the shortest possible time. Okay, and some other thing I, I want to ask of is, is security. Um, and, yes. you know, the occupational hazards, you know, that uh, your workers have to, of course, pass through as they carry yes. out their, you know, their duties. You know, how much of a concern is this? If you remember, not long ago, we spoke about um, a, a, tra a rail track that was bombed, by, allegedly by uh, insurgents or bandits. Um, so are these security concerns also, also things that bother your, your workers? And are there uh, conversations on the occupational hazards that real world workers have to pass through uh, that aren't even being you know, uh, uh, spoken about? Thank you very much. Uh, you see, uh, we have the, 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 what they call the group life assurance. That group life assurance has not been effective in railway at all because we are not aware of anybody that has been paid insurance in the occurrence of maybe death, especially when you are on duty. We have no such uh, incidents. So now we have agitated that personal life insurance should be given to especially the train crews. Then hazard allowance be introduced to the railway workers' salary, because railway workers are working in hazardous environment. And so all these two things are not in place at all as far as railway worker is concerned. So I feel if government will introduce this and make it very effective, we will be happy. Look at uh, the recent incidents of the bomb attack in uh, Abuja Kaduna line. Supposing anything happens to those drivers there, it will interest you to know that the passengers are insured. If anything happens to any passenger, then insurance company will pay in terms of treatment, in terms of death. But nothing happens. Nobody pays anything to the driver. That is to, to the next of kin of the drivers. So you can imagine the irony. The person doing the, the job, trying to save life. That driver, we recommend him very, very well, which of course we expect that a national award be given to that driver who drove that train that day. Because supposing he had panicked and maybe put the train to a stop at that point, so many lives would have been lost or so many people would have been kidnapped. 
So because we do not know the intention of those who planted the bomb. And you know, at the end of the, uh, immediately after the explosion, there were gunshots all over the locomotive. All their intention was to get at the driver because they believe if the driver is being killed, the train will stop and then they will perform their operations. So imagine if something had happened to that driver that day. All he will be paid is just burial expenses. That, and that's all. They will pay to the family. So that's not fair. So we have uh, told them that there is need for this personal life insurance that at the event of death, the nurse of king has no business with going to uh, any office in Abuja or this or that. All they have to do is to just have a direct contact with the insurance company for the claims of the, 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 the insurance cover on their uh, deceased. Hmm. Do you also see um, a possibility of government responding to, you know, some of the concerns that you have raised as regards the welfare of uh, the workers? We are very sure that the time will go on three days warning strike. All the big men that travel on our train will have the reason to see to the need to equally lend their voices in our agitation. And I'm sure by the time it gets to the president of Nigeria, our problems will be solved. All right. Um, I also want to you know, bring something up. Um, uh, not long ago, we saw a video clip of a train that was picking up passengers, uh, but not at a train station. Now, this happened, I believe, somewhere in Delta State. Uh, picking up passengers, yes. you know, along, you know, the, tr the track. I'm not sure exactly where, you know, this happened. Um, but, you know, are, are these some of the things that uh, railway workers are having to do in order to make some extra money? This is very little, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> that's that sounds very very funny of course because uh, i saw the video and uh, it is very unfortunate that uh, people do not know how railway operates there are stations that we call the halt station h-a-l-t okay halt station this is a station that's the i want to define that station to you now this is a station where no physical building is seen but it's a station that is in between the two stations that you see physical uh, building the intention is to identify a community who normally have a large turnout of people that indicates interest in traveling by rail even you as i talk to you if there's a railway line in your village and the station is far from your village you could put up application and when you put up application to railway management they will come they will inspect and then if it, you meet up the requirements, they will approve a horse station in that village. And so that station is equally like the normal station that you will see the physical building where trains will stop, pick passengers and their luggages, and then move to another location. So that wasn't an uh, intention uh, of, uh, uh, say, driver stop on section in order to pick passengers to make money for their pocket. That station, that whole station you see, there's a railway staff that is posted there to sell tickets, to estimate uh, uh, goods, uh, amount to be paid for goods and the services that will be rendered to every passenger that travels from that station. So it's a legal station that is meant for trains to stop, to pick and drop passengers on a daily basis. Well, I, 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 don't know, I don't know much about uh, about uh, trains. I've never been on a train, uh, so oh, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to you know argue about a halt station or not. It just looked like it was somewhere in the bush, um, and oh, uh, yeah. and, <laughs> and passengers were taking advantage of of that. Yeah, there's there's um, a community close by there. I forgot the name they gave that very station, but normally they name it after the village that the station is located. Okay. So it's a legal station that is recognized by railway authority. Okay. Well, um, we would, of course, look for that, uh, or look deeper into that. Um, you, you made mention earlier about the standard gauge and, of course, uh, what did you call it, the small small gauge uh, lines now? Narrow gauge. Oh, narrow, narrow gauge, I beg your pardon, yes. Um, yeah. so, so share with us, you know, exactly the value that the narrow gauge would give to uh, the country if we have that fully functional also. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I want to assure you that the narrow gauge cuts across 26 states in Nigeria. So, by estimation, 
when the trend moves from Lagos to Kano, in the past, when we, the narrow gauge was fully functional, we had trends moving from Kano to Port Harcourt. And if that trend is going to Port Harcourt, it leaves Lagos to Kaduna, from Kaduna to Kafanchan, from Kafanchan, Makodi, Makodi, Enugu, and then Port Harcourt. So imagine the number of villages that this trend will pass through. And among those villages, we have the whole stations too, where passing the train stops to pick passengers and their luggages. So imagine the kind of food that will be moving from the south to the north, from the north to the east, and from the east back to the north and all over the country. I assure you today that foods are so expensive in Lagos, especially in the whole country even, but especially in Lagos, because if foods that are being cultivated in the north are to be transported down to Lagos, for instance, if they are bringing it by road, a truck will convey that food, for instance, from Jaws to Lagos at the cost of 650,000 naira. So, and that is conveying only 30 tons to Lagos. So now, by the time the owner of the foodstuff gets his food here, that 650,000 naira goes into the cost that the consumer will pay in purchasing those uh, 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 food items. So, but when you travel, when you are transporting by rail, our full wagon carries one and a half trailer. We have a 39 tonner wagon, we have a 40 tonner wagon, and that is equivalent to almost one and a half uh, trailer. And the cost of transporting it from, for instance, Jaws to Lagos is not as much as that. And so you can imagine by the time that food those food items are transported down to Lagos at a cheaper rate. They would have no reason to make them expensive in the market. So yes. that is why we are insisting that federal government should purchase more locomotives, more coaches, more wagons for the narrow gauge. So that, let me tell you, uh, my brother, when you go to uh, uh, other countries where the same railway operates, you will see that in those countries, uh, goods that are heavy does not move is are not moved by road, road for more than 100 kilometers they are transported by by rail and once they move by rail to the location now vehicles can now come and evacuate to the nearest location so if that is done our roads in nigeria will last longer our roads in nigeria will be safe because the heavy uh, duty vehicles are contributing a lot in damaging our roads roads that are constructed Today, I assure you, within the next one year or two years, they will be bad again. Why? Because the railway system is not being put into effective use. If that is, if railway system, especially the narrow gauge, is effective, then we will have no reason for this. Then government would even decide that nobody should transport any bulky good for more than 100 kilometers from one location to the other. And if that is done, our roads will be safe, food will be cheaper in the market, and you see, one of the safest means of transportation is the railway. Imagine that bomb blast that took place between Abuja Kaduna rail line. Supposing it was a motor car or an aeroplane, what do you think would have happened? It would have been scattered and a lot of lives would be lost. So to some extent, the, 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 the train is, is, is safe in terms of attack by hoodlums, in terms of movement from one location to the other. So these are the economic values that are attached to the railway system. An effective railway system develops a country. An effective railway system makes life easier for workers, for, for, for farmers, and for everybody in the country. If we have effective railway system in Nigeria, I assure you, the economy we are crying every day that is biting so hard, things are expensive, things are that, it will come down to the barest minimum. Mm. All right, so um, do you think that, or is the railway system having enough patronage when compared to other means of transportation like, you know, the airways and the road? Are, are we really having enough patronage? And if we're not having enough patronage, then what can be done, you know, to increase that patronage here in Nigeria? Oh, the, the, the patronage is, is drastically very, very low because the distance that the trend covers does not cover a distance that the patronage will be high. Lagos to Ibadan is just 120 something kilometers. 
So Kaduna to Abuja is just 116 or 20 kilometers. So, but if that rail line will be extended to Kanu, to Katina, to Sokoto, and connect the entire state capital, I assure you nobody will travel by air or by road. They will all patronize the railway. So, at the moment, the patronage now, I can't say it is okay, because that is not what we expect. In the past, when a train is moving from here to, to, to Kanu, it would have conveyed over 2,000 passengers. Some will be dropping at their various locations while others are alighting. So you see, that is when we can say the system is very, very effective. But uh, I mean, we can say the patronage is, is, is fine. But for now, the patronage, the patronage is low because of the distance. So, But if locomotive will be purchased for the narrow gauge, coaches, wagons, and the rest of them, I assure you that nobody will travel by, 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 by air or by road. Okay. Because of the safety of our trains. Mr. Ajiji, um, share with us, our railway, um, or the, the whole function of the system, you know, are, are you people having to cut costs with, you know, the running of these uh, locomotive trains? Or is the government funding, you know, every aspect of it well enough? Yes, the government funded the organization by bringing the infrastructure in place. But we are generating money that is running the cost of, I mean, that is taking care of the cost of running those trains. Government doesn't put in any money any longer to run the trains we are running in Nigeria. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm just really, really, you know, shocked and, you know, it's sad that, like you've said, uh, well, according to what you've said, um, you know, there hasn't been any actual review of worker salaries and on, on, on uh, since 1983. That's the last time that yeah. that was had. Um, but over time, I'm sure you can confirm over time that, you know, the trains have still been running, maybe not as much as they have been since 2015, but trains have still been running across the country um, since in the last couple of decades. Is that yes. confirmed? Yes, yes, that's very correct. Uh, let me tell you, um, during Abacha, he purchased uh, 50 locomotives. That is the 2101 class local. And that has served us for some time, including wagons and coaches. And that has served the narrow gauge for some time because there wasn't any standard gauge as at then. So, and uh, during Good Luck Jonathan, he purchased 25 locomotives. That is the 2201 class locomotive. And those locals are still, some of them are still serving us till today in this country and those are the locals when you say some what, what do you mean by some and why some yeah yeah it has to be some because um uh some of the locals are granted so the few ones we have that are still functional are the ones that are still serving the corporation why so why are, are they grounded yeah they are grounded because uh some of them uh say the is uh, the, the spare parts are not there to maintain them and, uh, uh, and, and you know, at times, uh, Nigerian uh, factor, when uh, 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 something is damaged, a kind of cannibalization will take place, maybe remove from here and fix in there, remove from there to make sure that the corporation moves. Because that's, of that's, government that's actually one of the reasons that I asked the question about if the government is funding every other aspect of it, besides your welfare. You know, the other aspects of running a railway system, is it properly funded? Because if, if the former president, good luck, Jonathan, purchased 25 trains, you've said some of them are grounded, you know, and you've yes. said that because, of course, the spare parts aren't available. Um, it makes yes. me wonder what happens when, you know, the next one breaks down. Will it be fixed or is it going to join the list of those that have been grounded? Um, and you know, uh, certainly, certainly. God, God bless you. Uh, you see, uh, there has been a, a, a little neglect from the government in the past because uh, most of these locals that came, they came without spare parts. And then the union then, who was in charge then, kept complaining that government should bring spare parts, government should bring spare parts because a lifespan of a locomotive is 30 years. And these locals hasn't attended the, uh, uh, 30, the 30 years of uh, uh, being brought into Nigeria and they have not attended the 30 years of being put to use in Nigeria. And so you can see that we have a lot of them grounded. So which of course, government is supposed to do that funding because uh, railway cannot generate much money that can afford to purchase a, a spare parts from uh, for this locomotive. So that is our greatest fear. Even these particular ones we are talking about, Kaduna, Abuja, that has been our fear too. 
We keep insisting that spare parts should be brought. Let me tell you a little story. Uh, in the past, we have the local 1801 class and the local 1701 class. Local 1801 class and 1701 class served this nation for over 50 years. Because as at the time the white men were bringing those locals, they brought more than enough spare parts. And as I talk to you now, we still have some of the spare parts of these locals in our workshops. And yet, most of the locals are not longer functional. So you can imagine the vision of the white man, because those locals were brought by the white man, because local 1801 was built by Americans, then local 1701 was built by Canadians. And so when they were bringing them, they brought a lot, a, a, a lot of spare parts. So even these particular ones we have right now, we are insisting that government shouldn't let this one start getting grounded before they will begin to think of bringing spare parts. Spare parts are supposed to accompany these locals. How many how many um, trains are running Abuja Kaduna? Uh, in a day, we have um, about eight trains in a day. About eight trains running in a day between Abuja and Kaduna. Okay, so you have also mentioned that, uh, let's come back to the strike action that you are threatening to embark on uh, three days yeah. for that matter. Now, you have mentioned that if after three days the government does not respond, you get back to work. Should we expect yes. more strike action, more and more of it, you know, until your demands have been met? Uh, we will do everything within the confines of the law to make sure that uh, we struggle for our workers. And um, whatever the law says is what we will follow. So after the three days to warning strike, if they do not respond, we will go back to the drawing table, check the law, and then put into use what the law says about that. So no more strikes? There could be strikes, because I, I believe that's the only language the government understands. It, it, in the past 20 years, railway workers have never gone on strike. Check your records. Find out. Why? Because we've been patient and we've been praying and believing that it shall be well, it shall be well. But the more we pray and the more we pray, we hope that it shall be well, it's, the darker it becomes for us. So that's why we have no option than to behave like other colleagues in other organizations that have embarked on strike to make the agitation known to everybody. Okay. Um, well, it, it's, it's, it's a pretty you know, interesting picture, you know, and a sad one at the same time, um, hearing about the welfare of these workers, you know, 26,000 naira is, 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 is too paltry a sum to be paid to anybody as a salary at the end, end, end of the month. Um, and we hope, you know, and I think, you know, that's what I would say. I hope that since we have, of course, put in more energy and more interest in the railway system in Nigeria, that this, you know, will be considered and, you know, the Nigerian government will actually take it serious and pay railway workers better. Um, whose responsibility will it be or should it be to uh, speak about the unavailability of spare parts for these trains? Should that be your responsibility also? It is our responsibility because in as much as we're agitating for workers' welfare, we only want the organization to grow. We only want the organization to function. Because the more functional it is, the better for us and the better for the entire country and for the economy of the country. We want to use railway as an avenue to contribute our own quota to the economic system of the country and to the welfare of Nigerians. We are glad that we are serving Nigerians. We are glad that Nigerians are happy traveling by rail. My brother, let me assure you that nobody wants to go on strike. But when deaf ears are torn, on your request that are very very genuine and germane what option do you have yeah that's the only option available for labor ha has it always been eight trains running abuja kaduna sorry has there, has there always been eight trains running abuja kaduna like you mentioned or were there more before uh, there, are days, there are days we have like six trains because they run according to schedule and according to patronage yeah so there are days we have uh, six trains in a day there are days we have uh, eight trains now, what, what I'm asking is, has it always been a maximum of eight? Uh, yeah, yeah, it has been. But of recent, the management were thinking of even increasing to 10 or so, or thereabout. But um, I'm not too sure whether that has been done. Okay. Um, we would, I, I would, of course, continue to follow up. I hope that we can continue to share these uh, thoughts and have these conversations uh, with regards to the lifespan of these trains and hope that 
you know, they don't continue to break down. Uh, you said the go Good Luck Jonathan government purchased 25. You know, how many, do you have any idea how many of those trains are fully functional and how many have uh, uh, broken down? I don't think we have up to 10, and I stand to be corrected, but I don't think we have up to 10 locomotives or 15 locomotives that are still functional from the one Good Luck Jonathan brought. Among the ones uh, uh, President Abacha brought, I don't think we have up to up to two or three that are still functional. So, 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 these so, are the so things how that many? Are, so, how many? If, if if you, I don't know if you have the you know the figures. How many fully functional trains do we have across the country currently? And I'm okay, talking about the, the passenger like trains, the ones running uh, war, um, Abuja, like Kaduna, Lagos, Ibadan, and of course uh, Wari Takbe. Uh, Lagos Ibadan is standard gauge. So yeah. standard gauge is fully operational. That I'm not uh, saying anything about it for now. But okay. what I'm, my concern is, is the narrow gauge. Yeah. And as I talk to you, the narrow gauge runs only one train from Lagos to Kanu on weekly basis, once in a week. It runs uh, pipes uh, depending on the time they deliver and come back and reload and move. It runs pipes constantly between Lagos to Kanu. Yeah. Then we have a passenger train that runs twice or thrice in a week, I stand to be corrected, between Kano and Unguru. Then we have another train running, I think, on daily basis between Aba and Potakot. So those are the trains we have on the narrow gauge. But for standard gauge, we are perfectly working very well. We have no issues there. So for the trains that you say have been grounded, why haven't they been fixed? I mean, uh, these are resources that are tied down and it would go a long way in increasing the performance of, you know, the rail system. Yeah, because government have not uh, made available spare parts. So we are still calling on government to see to the need to bring spare parts so that we have engineers that can revive these locals if the spare parts are made available we don't need to do any outsider to come and fix them we can do them ourselves so if government will make available the spare parts these locals will be back on their feet and they will be functional okay. is government in the know that uh, you're in need of spare parts you know to fix uh, i have mentioned it severally i have mentioned it even there was a time i have uh, I had uh, an opportunity to meet with the House of Reps uh, Committee on Land Transport sometimes uh, early this year. I mentioned it to them. So government are aware because this time we talk, we see because, you see, when there is no locomotive that is functional, what are we going to be doing in railway? Government will have no reasons to keep railway workers because they cannot be keeping people and be paying them salaries for not doing anything at all. So we have the fear that if spare parts are not being brought, our jobs could be in danger. So that's why we keep agitating that. Please, let these spare parts come so that we can be fixing these locals as they are getting uh, 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 issues so that our work will continue. That is our target. Yeah. And, and, and like you also said, these aren't even new trains. So, you know, they have, yeah. of course, a lifespan that has run before they eventually brought to Nigeria. And uh, they, of course, are running out, you know, on that same lifespan. Um, and it could break down at any point. Certainly, certainly. All right, uh, I think we can wrap up uh, the conversation here. Comrade Innocent Uka Gigi, the President General, National Union of Rail Workers, uh, Railway Workers, thank you very much. Um, like you said, there would likely be a, a three day warning strike from the 18th. And after that, of course, um, you know, you are back to work. You know, and of course, the conversation with the minister and with the Nigerian government continues. Um, but of course, it's going to be very, very stressful for Nigerians in those three days. I'm sure that you agree with that. We are aware. All right. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. We, of course, will look forward to speaking with you again. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. All right. Um, I, I totally enjoyed that conversation. And, and it's mostly because of me, me being fascinated with the railway system. Um, and seeing you, know, you need to get on the train. Yeah, I, I absolutely do. You, um, if it wasn't, you know, live television, I probably would have asked him other details. You know, <laughs> just, just for my own, the little boy in me, you know, that little bit of excitement. You, you should. Know, I mean, tell me what this button here. does. You know, what, what does well, this, <laughs> How fast does it go? Those random questions. I really enjoyed it. But anyway, um, aside, you know, the, the the funny aspects of it, you know, the, what's ma mainly serious here is the fact that railway workers demand a review of their salaries. 
um, 26,000 naira makes absolutely no sense to be paid to anybody in today's Nigeria. Seeing the price of price of good uh, uh, goods and items, seeing how much rent is currently costing, and of course some of the other things that he also mentioned, the welfare of these workers, the person who is going to be maintaining those train tracks, the person uh, maintaining those locomotives, even if there are no spare parts, the person also um, you know driving the trains. I think they're called drivers or pilots. Mm, well, I'm, not, I'm not sure about well, that. The person, you know, moving the trains from one city to the other does not, you know, uh, uh, you know, um, deserve 26,000 naira a month as salary. So I hope it's uh, something, you know, that is taken seriously and, you know, something is done. Especially when we're talking about the issue of, you know, insecurity. Uh, this is not to make an excuse, but I mean, I am thinking, sitting down here thinking about 26,000 naira and how you're going to, you know, leave. Uh, for some persons that do have families, yeah. how do they have to pay the bills, yeah. the rents, and probably have kids who have to be in school, and also have extended family who will be dependent on them. I think we need to do better as a people. Let's pay attention to the hand that lays the golden end. If I was a train, I would definitely carry along. Um, if I was one of the train drivers, stop at random spots and pick up passengers. <laughs> no, but, that, but, but that's bad. <laughs> All right, this is where we call it a wrap. Of course, if you missed out on any part of the conversation, it's all right to uh, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. It's at Plus TV Africa and on YouTube to be part of the conversation that you missed out on. I am Messi Boku. Do have a great Monday morning. And I am Osaogi Ogbawa.